too much dust accumulated on the sensor. When automatic cleaning is not enough, you have to intervene manually. I tried many systems, and today I'll explain the two ways I use to clean the camera sensor. Don't worry, it's easy, cheap and affordable for everyone. After the bumper. Hi, I'm Mariano from videozap.com. This channel is about photography and video. You will find tests, guides and tutorials just like today's one. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next videos. For all the links to the products and resources I tell you about in this video, as usual take a look at the description below. First of all, how to understand when it's time to clean the sensor. If in your photos, on uniform surfaces, for example in the sky, you start to see strange specks that are always in the same place. That is the clear sign that you have dust on the sensor. In photos, it is usually extremely simple to remove. In Lightroom, just use the appropriate tool and one click. Generally, the program does everything by itself. Same thing in Photoshop, just use the appropriate tool to eliminate unwanted details. One click and generally the problem is solved. So don't worry too much because generally with photos that you didn't notice the dust, you can then remove it in post-production. When you have so many photos, it can clearly become a real nuisance. The real problem arises in the video where it is practically impossible to remove the dust. If you have a hair, a speck of dust or something like that, and it appears in a point where it is particularly visible, for example on a uniform detail such as the sky generally, but also a wall or anything else, you have a problem because, I repeat, in the video with the fact that the image and the movement is extremely complicated, I would say within the limits of reasonableness impossible, because, unless you absolutely must have that sequence and therefore putting them to retouch frame by frame, it is absolutely quite a hassle to take out. How do you know if there is dust before taking the photos or videos? It's easy enough, let's put the lens back on this camera. First of all, well, don't do that thing I'm doing now. Which is the main way to dust the sensor, i.e. leave the camera open. You must never do that. I'm doing it but only to make this video. And then I will regret it sadly. I was saying, to see if there is dust on the sensor. If you have a reflex, put the live view. Instead, if you have a mirrorless, clearly, you are already in live view because you have no alternatives. Completely blur what's in front of you, preferably a flat surface like a wall. So focus to manual and blur it completely. If moving the camera, you see that there are always dots in the same place. That is dust. Eventually, you can also use the magnification, the one for focusing, and look at the various parts of the sensor by moving the focus area. In this way, maybe if the dot is very small, you can see it more easily. But I tell you with this system is quite easy. If you want to be even more sure, Take a photo with the wall completely blurred, look at it 100% on the computer, and in this way you will mathematically notice if there are any dust dots. If you found that there is the dust on the sensor, the first thing you need to try is the automatic sensor cleaning of the camera. You would have already done this. In any case, go to the menu and activate the function. For example, Canon does this automatically every time you turn it off. But when you do it manually, it makes a process a little more accurate. I will show you. Here it is. You see, it does it a little longer. I advise you to do this operation by holding the camera in this way so that the dust eventually falls down. If cleaning the sensor face down a couple of times doesn't solve the problem, the next step is to get a blower. I have this one, which I highly recommend. You can find the link in the description below. Why I recommend it? First of all, because it's super cool and stands on its own. Secondly, because it has a valve that filters the air and above all, it never sucks the air in from the front. And this is a big advantage because there are some that have a valve in front. But it's not the same thing as having a system that prevents to sucks the air in from the front. Because the dust, however, can also be deposited in the part around the spout that blows. And then when you go to blow it, 
you shoot it towards the sensor or the lens, which is absolutely to be avoided. I strongly recommend the original of this product because it has a reasonable cost after all, high compared to what you take home, but still reasonable. And above all, it really lasts a lifetime. There is no reason to save money on something that I would carry you around for so long. Before proceeding with the manual cleaning of the sensor, it is essential that you read the manual of the camera. If it's a reflex, you should put it in the special cleaning mode. That is to raise the mirror and expose the sensor. Even if it's a mirrorless, read the manual. Because it's true that the sensor is always exposed. But it's also true that, especially if the sensor is stabilized, the camera goes placed in a safe mode, where you don't risk damaging the mechanisms that move the sensor. How do you clean the sensor with air? Simply hold the camera face down and blow. The vast majority of times this operation is already completely sufficient. The sensor after this operation is clean and the dust is gone. The thing to avoid like the plague is to blow your mouth on the sensor. Because sooner or later there you'll spit on it, and this is clearly not the idea of the century. If you haven't solved it in this way, the next step is to go the hard way and use a specific cleaning system for the sensor. This is a Canadian product from Visible Dust. This is a great product. This is with the medium potency. You are provided with two capsules of liquid. This green is a little less aggressive and in any case removes fingerprints and other imperfections on the sensor. This blue also removes traces of oil, limestone. Therefore, let's say, dirt also very aggressive for the sensor. Which theoretically, in short, you shouldn't change the lens in the rain with the camera face up. It doesn't seem like the idea of the century. Together with the liquids, there are these scoops, which are called swabs and which are used precisely to clean the sensor. You have to take the kit of the right size for the sensor of your camera. These are for APS-C and therefore have the width of the sensor because in principle the best thing is to rub it lengthwise. Now I'll show you how. This product is not very easy to find in Italy. I got it in the United States and in any case it lasts a very long time because, I tell you the truth, with this system, I clean the sensor perhaps once a year, because for all other occasions, blowing it is more than enough. It is clear that if you do what I am doing now, i.e. leave the camera with the sensor exposed, you will need several of these kits. Same thing if you don't pay attention to how you change the lens. If you do it in the middle of a sandstorm, it's normal that you destroy the sensor, but in short, with a minimum of caution and doing it quickly enough without leaving the camera with the sensor exposed and maybe having the courtesy to do it with the sensor directed downwards. The dust that arrives on the sensor is really a minimum quantity. I assure you, I do this operation very rarely. In any case, in the description, I'll link you to this product and another that is easier to find in Italy and which is still quite good. Before using the kit, always remember to blow the sensor as I showed you, i.e. this way here. Then take the camera, arrange it horizontally in a clean place. Open one of these pallets, being careful not to touch it or contaminate it in any way, so don't place it anywhere. You give it a good blow with the blower. In order to avoid that some fibers that perhaps should have detached over time can then be deposited on the sensor. You drop a couple of pieces on it. I suggest you start with the green solution, therefore the slightly less aggressive one, just a couple of bites, more than enough. You wait about 10 seconds for the liquid that has deposited on the front of the paddle. At this point you have to pass over the sensor at an angle of about 45 degrees from one side to the other. When you get to the bottom if you want you can turn the paddle and pass in the opposite direction. But at this point you have to take the paddle and throw it away because you don't have to use it anymore. On the instructions of some kits it is written to wipe with this first dry swab, throw it away, take another one, wet it, wipe with the wet one, throw it away, and then wipe again with another dry one. In my opinion this thing is absolutely useless. That is, it serves the producers to sell more kits. But as far as the police are concerned, I tell you with the system that you just explained you get a practically perfect result, 
and use only one of these swabs which in any case have their cost. Now that you've seen how to do it, a couple of recommendations. If you use the blower, it is practically impossible to do damage, especially if you bought a quality blower like this, unless you accidentally touch the sensor. But in short, with a minimum of attention, it is practically impossible to do it. Conversely, if you don't feel comfortable using cleaning kits, don't use it. Take the camera for assistance. Take it to a specialized shop or to a specialized assistance center that can do this operation for you. It is extremely simple and within everyone's reach. But if you are not calm, I repeat, don't do it because the camera is an expensive item. The sensor is probably the most expensive part of the camera. So if you think you're not confident and you think you're doing damage, don't do it. I've always cleaned my sensors by myself. I've never done any damage, but I tell you it's an operation that inherently presents risks because causing trouble is always possible. If you don't feel comfortable, I repeat, forget it, take the car to assistance. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't be shy and put a big thumbs up. What do you think about these two ways to clean the sensor? Do you know any other system? Let me know in the comments below. Here, I'll link you to a couple of videos that you may not have seen and might be useful to you. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video and if you want to help out with the channel, share it on your Facebook or Twitter and if you want to buy me a coffee, you can find the link in the description. But above all, remember never stop learning. See you in the next video.